Hey folks, good morning and welcome to the official North American press introduction for Vespa's new GTS scooter. We are here in Rome, Italy, one of the ancient cities of Earth to test ride this new and improved GTS scooter from Vespa. So let's throw the helmet on and go for a ride. All right, folks, here it is, Vespa's GTS scooter. This is an all new 300cc class, 287cc to be exact, scooter out of this Vespa. Vespa is owned by the Piaggio Group out of Northern Italy. Now for the 2023 model year, Vespa has done a host of modifications to this vehicle. Look at its bow. This bow fairing is now flatter and less rounded on the edges as is the front fender. Now Vespa's doing that because they want to have, they call it a more dynamic look, but really if you look at the rest of Piaggio Group's products, including Aprilia, the modern trend on the body design of these vehicles is for bigger, flatter surfaces. So that's what they've done with this vehicle here. This particular Vespa is the Super Vespa. So there's four Vespas in the US model lineup. You have the GTS, you have the Super, Super Sport, and the Super Tex. Four Vespa scooters. Look at this fake carbon fiber bow tie. This is a signature styling element of Vespa scooters. We have LED headlights, LED turn signals, and a neat LED taillight. This thing looks like a 1950s car. I really like the, the shape of this. Now to match that forward body panel, the back body panels are also a little bit more flat and a little bit longer here in the rear section. Now all of these Vespa scooters for 2023 are keyless entry. So keyless fob style start. I'm not a big keyless fob style start power sport user, but still for a scooter application, I think that will be okay. Other neat modifications are this handlebar is about 0.8 inch longer, or I'm sorry, wider on either side. And the front suspension has been overhauled as has the rear suspension. So those are some of the improvements that this vehicle has donned for 2023. But enough talking about it, let's swing a leg inside the cockpit and go for a ride. All right, folks. Now, the great thing about scooters is the ability to bring your goodies with you in a very easy way. Now, this particular Vespa GTS has this trunk open button. You press that button, it's electronically actuated, and there is the trunk. In here, I have my trusty OGO 450 fanny pack. I never leave home without it. And I have my camera to take nice photos for all of the fans out there. Here is where we put the fuel. This vehicle runs on unleaded fuel. The fuel capacity is two and a quarter gallon. This thing has electronic fuel injection, so no having to mess with anything, you just press the starter button and away you go. In addition to the under seat storage compartment, we have another secret storage compartment. This thing's a neat storage compartment because it blends in seamlessly to the forward fairing of this Vespa GTS vehicle. To access it, you simply hit the on button, wait till this thing spools up and then push it in. And there, that opens up. And then we have a nice storage compartment. It would be nice if this was padded. As you can see, this is paint, so all your stuff will just get scratched up. Vespa should have padded this interior compartment realistically. But it is neat that we have a USB power port right here. So we can charge 
are USB devices right now. I do like that, but this interior area should be padded. Still neat that we have copious amounts of storage on this Vespa GTS. All right, folks, good morning. Here we are at the official press introduction for Vespa's GTS gasoline powered scooter. Now for the 2023 model year, Vespa has done a number of nice improvements to this model. And we get to experience it near Vespa's hometown in Rome, Italy. Yes, that's right. We are in the ancient city of Rome with a population of 2.7 million people. What a place to ride a scooter. If there was any place in the world I would want to be operating a scooter at, it would be in a dense city like Rome, Italy. So here we are on the Vespa GTS. The Vespa GTS is powered by a 287cc single cylinder water cooled fuel injected four stroke gasoline engine. This bike, I'm sorry, this scooter benefits from the twist and go simplicity of a CVT automatic transmission. Z, a CVT automatic transmission takes the guesswork out of riding. All you have to do is twist the throttle, which is here on the right tube here, and that is what allows this vehicle to accelerate. It puts power back to a 12 inch back wheel. Now the thing I like about these scooters is just so how easy they are to ride. You don't have to be someone with a lot of motorcycle or power sport experience to operate this vehicle. Now instead of a traditional clutch lever, this vehicle has, has a brake lever where the clutch would be. So this brake lever here operates the rear brake hydraulically. So this particular GTS has hydraulic disc brakes front and rear. And for 2023, Vespa actually overhauled the calipers and the master cylinder of both brake for better brake response when you are pressing on either lever and the stopping distance on this vehicle is a few feet shorter when you are traveling at speed. As usual, this vehicle has always on full time ABS. Look guys, that building in front of us right there, that is the Vatican. That is one of the most significant pieces of architecture here in Rome. That's right folks, we're not a religious channel by any means, but one of the claim to fames of Rome is that it is the birthplace of Christian Christianity. And there is the centerpiece for the Christian faith and religion. How cool is that? All right, back to the Vespa G S. So the brake components were overhauled. The suspension was also tweaked. The front and the rear suspension were tweaked to complement the braking improvements to allow this vehicle to stop more quickly. And wow, this Vespa 300 GTS sure does ride nicely. Right now we're riding on some pretty smooth paved asphalt streets, but here in a little bit we'll be riding over bumps and on old cobblestone roads from the, I don't even know from when, from the 1200s, maybe even older than that. You gotta remember, Rome was originally established some 3,000 years ago. 3,000 years ago. Old folklore has it that Two brothers, Romulus and Remus, they were left to die by their by whoever, and a she-wolf, a wolf, 
a female wolf somehow found these babies and took them under her hind legs somehow. Legend also has it that Romulus eventually killed his brother Remus, and that is how Rome was started. Pretty crazy. That was some 3,000 years ago. Other neat modifications Vespa has done for the 2023 model year include the handlebar. It is now 0.8 inches wider on either side, so right around 1.6 inches wider in total. The switch gear is also new. It's a little bit plasticky for my taste. It still has decent tactile feel, but for a scooter that costs $88,100, that's right guys, $8,100 for this 287cc scooter. It's a lot of money. Fit and finish should be a little bit better for that MSRP. We are riding the GTS Super Sport which is now in the GTS line there's actually three models you have the classic GTS the super the super sport and the super tech so we are on the third of four versions above this would be the super tech which rings at just under nine thousand dollars and that comes with a 4.3 inch color TFT screen as opposed to this mixed analog and digital dash. It also comes equipped with a carpeted storage bunk with an LED light inside. I would definitely like that carpeted storage bunk with the LED light. That would keep your goodies from getting scratched and marred up. So that is a feature I would like. The color TFT I could probably live without this analog and digital dash seems pretty easy to read. I can see the fuel gauge very well, engine coolant temperature, ASF, that is Vespa's form of traction control. It's a wheel speed traction control system. It's always on, but you can turn it off. I don't know why you'd want to turn it off. Maybe if you wanted to do skids or slides, maybe. This multi-wheel control function here manipulates the various settings. We have average fuel consumption, dual trip meters, range, everything's in kilometers. I tried to switch it into US Imperial data set, but I was unable to do it. So we have to live with the metric system today on this ride. The gentleman keeps, yep, I understand. The gentleman keeps turning off my high beams, but I like my high beams on because high beams allow people to see mo me more easily. So we're gonna turn them back on. Yes, because I like them. I will turn them off. Whoa, I don't wanna blind the guy in his mirrors. Speaking of mirrors, these rear view mirrors on this GTS, they work pretty well. They have a good view of what's going on behind me. They shake a little bit, but not too bad. Now this 287cc single is good for right around 24 horsepower, says Vespa. And it's got decent get up and go for getting around town and for getting the jump on automobiles at a stoplight. The engine has more than enough pep to do that. Now at idle, I definitely can feel some engine vibration here through the controls. It's not off-putting, off but you definitely feel the vibration through the controls and the seat. When we start get going here though a little bit, the vibration just kind of goes away and it's replaced by real smooth 
ride quality. Now, because this is an official press introduction, we have to follow our lead rider in front of us. We can't do our usual high level of testing that we put all of our vehicles through. So we won't be able to ride this vehicle after dark. So we can't comment on the function of its LED headlight. But I do like that Vespa has added full LED lighting. Realistically though, for its $8,100 price tag, it absolutely should have that feature. There is another view of the Vatican. Lots of people here. This is during the week, so a little bit less people than a weekend. And here we go, folks, navigating our way through Rome on the Vespa GTS. This scooter rolls on 12 inch wheels. It weighs right around 347 pounds, which is kind of a lot. But when you're riding this vehicle, it certainly feels much lighter. For 2023, Vespa has altered the ergonomics, the shape of the seat, the shape of this running board area, and it's very accommodating motorcycle to ride around town. I'm six foot tall. I weigh right around 198 pounds. I'm very heavy. I've been eating way too much ravioli and pasta at home in California. Getting ready to be a, come Italian for a few days. But I fit on this scooter quite nicely. I like the seat. It's reasonably broad for a scooter. Pretty flat. And it has a nice amount of grip against my Revit jeans, which is nice so I don't slip or slide forward when I give this bike the berries or actuate the brake levers. God, this thing's got nice get up and go. It's a good amount of torque. And the CVT, the action of the CVT automatic transmission is real nice. Sometimes CVT automatic transmissions have a bit of a lag this Vespa GTS feels very responsive when you twist the throttle, and I like that. I also like that the CVT isn't crazy loud. CVT transmissions in have a reputation for being real loud and real droney and annoying. This thing isn't overly loud or bothersome, which is nice. Now, Vespa is trying to elevate its technology game. So, in the future, you're going to be able to pair your phone to this device via Bluetooth. But, realistically, if you pair your phone via Bluetooth to read text messages and to see what music you're playing, this display is so small and you have to look down so low where, where, where you're not in field of view that having Bluetooth functionality with your phone is kind of a moot point. I don't, I don't even know why you would ever use it. Still, it's nice that Vespa is trying to catch up with its competition and offer some type of Bluetooth connectivity. Vespa will also be offering uh, an app so you can monitor your maintenance intervals and monitor the your duration of your rides and just give the owner more function and usability when they're away from their bike but on their smartphone. A lot of motorcycle manufacturers are now including that type of technology so it's nice that Vespa is doing its part and trying to elevate the technology game with its single cylinder gasoline powered scooters. Now the neat thing about riding a scooter in a densely populated urban environment like 
Rome, Italy, is that these things are just so maneuverable. They're really easy to get in and out of traffic. The footprint of these vehicles is very small. They're easy to park. This particular Vespa GTS benefits from a kickstand and a center stand. So you can use a kickstand like you would a normal motorcycle, or you can elevate the rear wheel with a center stand. Now it's worth noting that, oddly enough, this Vespa GTS doesn't come equipped with any parking brake. So there's no manual parking brake, you are always rolling. So if you want to prevent this vehicle from ro rolling forward, forward or backward, you want to put it on its center stand. Center stand, despite this vehicle weighing 340 some pounds, it is very easy to put on a center stand even if you are not an exceptionally strong human. Like the response of these brakes, they have nice feel, real accurate response, and having ABS front and rear just fully mitigates uh, instability during braking. So you can use the brakes as hard as you want and you never have to worry about either tire skidding. Very nice. Now this Vespa GTS has a top speed of right around 77 miles per hour. We won't be getting up to that top speed today. But it's nice to know that this vehicle is freeway capable in the United States. Like all Vespa scooters, this GTS comes with a two-year unlimited mileage warranty maintenance intervals. Your first maintenance is designated right around the 600 mile mark. After that, this bike goes 10,000 kilometers between maintenance and oil changes at 6,200 miles. So every 6,200 miles, this vehicle needs service. Vespa is offering extended warranties and extended maintenance contracts so you can get warranty and maintenance service on this scooter for up to four years. Pretty neat. Of course, all of that comes at an upcharge. I really like the looks of this Vespa GTS, especially in this like Hot Wheels orange colorway. I know that's not the official name of the color, but this Hot Wheels orange colorway is just awesome. This thing is a real looker. The quality of the paint is, is fairly good, but there is quite a bit of orange peel on the surface of the body. And it's really apparent in this bright orange paint. Now a lot of vehicles these days have orange peel in the paint, so we're not necessarily going to knock Vespa for, for having that, but still, I mean, this is an $8,100 vehicle. If I paid $8,100, especially for a gasoline single cylinder scooter, I really wouldn't want any orange peel. So maybe next time Vespa give this thing a little bit more wet sand when you're in the paint shop, but still a very pretty scooter definitely a head turner. It's worth mentioning that Vespa, Vespa if you can even believe it, they started making scooters in 1945. So just at the end of World War II they started making scooters. They made scooters out of scrap parts from an aircraft. That's why this the original Vespa almost always had some kind of old school aerospace space type look. Back in the mid 40s, Vespa is credited for really helping kickstart the Italian economy. You have to remember, Italy was decimated by World War II. No one had any money, no one had any food, all the buildings were blown up, all the roads were destroyed, no one had any vehicles. and gasoline powered Vespa scooters allowed people to rebuild, allowed people to transport themselves from one place to the next, bring their goods and services where they needed to be, and it was able to do it for not a lot of money. I think within the first decade of Vespa being in business from 1945 to 1955 or 1956, it manufactured one million scooters in that 
decade time frame, you know, back 70 years ago. How crazy is that? Now, although the scooter market in the United States is fairly small, in regions like Indonesia, if you can even believe it, they sell millions of scooters per year, millions. So the ability to offer a nice riding contemporary styled scooter is a big deal, especially in those Asian Southeast and East Asian countries where the middle class living standard is growing every day. Back a long time ago, the middle class was so small. Well, these countries are developing so rapidly that the middle class is growing and they have the money to buy premium scooters like this GTS 300. And Vespa is keen to get in on the action. So here we are riding on an old cobblestone road from whoever knows how many hundreds if not thousands of years ago. And this scooter rides pretty good over this stuff. This stuff is really rough, but the twin rear shocks are doing a good job of filtering the broken effects of this cobblestone road. I could get used to riding this scooter around town if I lived in a dense urban environment like this place, I would definitely want a gasoline powered scooter. It would just make life so much easier. Here's some big potholes, let's go over those. You definitely feel them, but they're not too uncomfortable. You hear a little bit of plastic jarring from these body panels when you hit those big bumps. I don't know the legal requirements as far as age to operate a scooter in Italy, but in the United States, you need, in the specifically in the state of California, you need to have a scooter endorsement to operate this vehicle on the roads in California. There in front of us is the Coliseum. The Coliseum was a structure built in right around, I want to say 70 AD, 70 AD that that Coliseum was constructed. It took right around 10 years to build that thing. Can you believe that? And it's still standing today, some 1900, 2000 years later, that Coliseum is still standing. That is just amazing. Wow. That is where the Roman games would be played. Very violent, brutal games. My God, isn't that crazy? how that building was built 2,000 years ago and that concrete was so hardcore it's still standing. That is superb, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, look at that, the Colosseum from 70 AD, look at that thing. Unbelievable. That man built that. It's crazy because Roman civilization, it really, it really gave us so many things that we just consider so normal today. Sewer, water transport, water ducting, concrete. Amazing roads. Back in the day, the Romans were building roads. I forget the statistic, but I think, God, even before, literally thousands of year, years ago, they made 50,000 miles of roads connecting the vast Roman Empire before all things, all hell went loose and the Romans failed whenever that was, I think. 500 AD, I think it was, when the Roman Empire eventually failed. 
Alright, we're gonna race right now. See what's up. A little 287cc scooter race. Yep, this thing's got some pep. Yeah, nice. Nice. Wow, this is just beautiful, guys. What a neat way to get around town on these Vespa scooters. All right, folks, here we are just outside of Rome. We are headed into the countryside. We have gathered some speed right now. We are going, well, we have gathered some speed, and then that guy in the van in front of the white Zuzu looking vehicle is blocking us. For right now, we're going 40 miles per hour, going a little bit faster. And this Vespa GTS has a little bit of urban touring chops. Really like the way this thing is, just its size, its packaging, how responsive the CVT automatic transmission is, the torque of the 287cc engine. This thing is a nice little urban scooter. All right, folks, there it is. Vespa's 2023 GTS Super Sport. That was a fun day riding around and inside of the ancient city of Rome. What a better way to get around the city than this 287cc GTS scooter from Vespa. I really like the, the styling of this vehicle. It really pays homage to where Vespa's been. I like the modern touches with the wider front fender and forward fairing. Of course, LED lighting is a must, a must in the modern era. That's very nice. I really like the storage on this bike, though the underseat storage gets a little hot. All of my goodies inside here are hot. My water's hot, my camera's hot, my battery pack's hot. You know, the stuff inside this compartment shouldn't get as hot as it does. So that would definitely annoy me because after all, you're gonna put your cool in here, cooler in here, you're gonna put your 12 pack of soda and you're gonna wanna have it be cold and it will not stay cold in this trunk. But still, I do like the twist and go simplicity of the CVT automatic transmission. This engine has a surprising amount of pep. It's very easy to ride. And all in all, it's a very nice vehicle for urban use, which brings us to the price, 8,100 US dollars for this particular GTS. And that is just way too much money for what this scooter is realistically for eight thousand one hundred dollars you can buy a full-on street bike for that price which will have a lot more capability and versatility than this gts still if you're looking for the twist and go simplicity of a scooter with the signature Vespa styling, signature Vespa character and history that this brand has. You gotta remember Vespa's been making these scooters since 1945. Then maybe this $8,100 scooter will be right for you. But for my money, it's just way too expensive. We'd like to see this scooter priced at $6,000. That would be a better price for what it is. All right, folks, that wraps up our review of this 2023 Vespa GTS scooter. Make sure to log on to MotorcyclistOnline.com. That's where all of our written content comes to life. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs it down if you didn't. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for scooting around Rome with us today.